Hi, and welcome to the Finance Hour. I'm your host, Wayne Randall. It's an honor to introduce my next guest. He's a gentleman that stood the test of time. He's first in his class, and I don't mean in his graduation class, but first in a class that was predominantly white at the time. He's first African-American in the United States Navy wrestling team in 1963, Rhode Island. Let me welcome the legend himself, Mr. Leon Bailey. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine, Wayne. How you doing? I'm doing much better now. Hopefully, this is going to be the one that's going to make it happen. Glad to see you smiling. You yes, know, sir. I read through some of the material you gave me, and you had a very interesting encounter with a gentleman named Larry Cobb. It seems like your life story resonated with him. Can you just give us a little, a little, uh, a little insight to what that was about when he got back in touch with you? Yes. Uh, the way that came about was I was at Fort Meade doing a book signing. Mm -hmm. And Wayne came up. He came up to me mm -hmm. and wanted to purchase a book. So he purchased my book naturally. I'm telling the background, you know, my autobiography of my life and mm -hmm. some of the challenges that I went through during that early part of the 60s and uh, how I overcome, how I overcame those. Yes. And with that, mm -hmm. uh, talking to him about my book, after I signed it, you know, autographed it for him, I asked him, could, once he read it, could he give me some feedback on it, give me his, uh, what he thought of the book? Mm -hmm. and sure. And fun, you know, because I like to have some feedback on uh, what other people think of the book, not Leon Bailey talking about himself trying to promote his book. Right. So uh, what happened, again, this was on a weekend, mm -hmm. Friday or Saturday, that, this, uh, that I met him. And I think it was Monday that I received an email from him, you know, and when I start reading the email, and I'm saying to myself as I read it, I said, said that he took a lot of time and put a lot into his response in reference to my book to the, how it was influencing him. Mm -hmm. influencing him. And this is something that I tried to tell people to the extent that I want my book to be inspirational and motivational. Yes. And that they can come or we can come over overcome a lot of things. Absolutely. I mean during the period of time that you came up and we know you were dealing with racial inequality, it was the civil rights movement. You were in the you were in the brunt of it at all. All of it. Um, I want to try to interject some slides in here. I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to try to. It seems like I see something appearing that I saw before, but we're going to try something. Tell me if you see that slide. Yes, I do. Okay, I don't know how clear it is on your end. It's pretty clear on my end. I, I can oh. see the picture. I can see uh, the writing and everything. It, it talks about me being a trailblazer in the United States Navy. Yes. A great Navy wrestling champion. Okay. And it seems like it has a timeline on the bottom. Yes. Hey, tell us a little bit about what went on in that first period in 1963. Well, I went in the service, give you a little background. In 1962, I went, 1962, I joined the Navy for the uh, sole purpose of wrestling and boxing for the United States Navy. 
Yeah. Uh, but what happened at the, you know I went to boot camp. Well, I received orders at the boot camp to go to Walter Reed Army Hospital, and that was there for a whole year. But it was no wrestling, you know, so it was very disappointing. Yeah. I mean, very disappointing to the extent that that what I wanted to do for the Navy. In 1963, I received orders to go to Quonset Point Naval Air Station uh, to uh, be attached to the USS Essex CBS-9. Okay. Aircraft carry, anti-submarine warfare. And because the ship was out on a cruise, on another cruise, uh, it wouldn't return until December of 63. So in the oh. meantime, was in the meantime, I was uh, attached to the transit bird waiting, waiting to uh, for the ship to come back. Okay. So with with being in a being in the transit bird, that meant that I would do different duties on base. You know, okay. I'd be unloading, cutting grass, whatever that may be, you know, I had to do. Okay. You know, so um, with that, doing those different assignments, one day I received orders, orders to uh, work in the gymnasium. Okay. And working in the gymnasium, what I found out and discovered that I had to report to a, a first class petty officer, and he told me what I had to do. Told okay. me what I had to do: clean the, you know, clean the, the bathrooms, mop the floor, and everything like that. But when I was during this period of time, I I had a mop that I had to clean the, the gym floor with. And if you've been on a military base, you don't see a gym floor dirty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, I still had to go take them out and go across the floor. So going across the floor, uh, I happened to pause a minute and I looked up on a wall because there was a sign there, and 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 in the sign I looked and read it, and it says wrestlers needed. Oh my gracious! I'm like, oh, uh, let, let me let me let me drop this mop. And I ran to the petty officer. I said, well, I see a sign out there for wrestlers. And uh, he said, yes. He says, uh, you can come back after you get off work, you know, about 4 o'clock. So okay. I just jumped back in and did my work. And 4 o'clock, I went back to try to uh, try play team. And I met one of the wonderful persons I ever met in my life, uh, Commander Josiah Henson. Uh, he, Commander Josiah Henson was trying to accept. Actually, he had special orders also. Okay. Uh, to Go ahead. It sounded yeah. like uh, Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. it sounded like he was yeah. instrumental. He was instrumental in yeah. you going to the next level. Yes, yeah. he was very, very instrumental uh, in me going to the next level, and that was to be able to wrestle for the United States Navy. Uh, okay. Commander Henson, uh, again, during that period of time, or the early 60s, Man Henson didn't look at my color. He looked at my skills. Yes. And, and, and establishing this wrestling team, for you to know, it was anywhere from 75 to 150, maybe, Marines and sailors at that time. Okay. And I was fortunate enough to make the team. And as, as the sign says, I was the first Negro to integrate a Navy wrestling team in 1963. 1963. And then what happened in um, 1964? 1964, that's when I won the New England AAU Wrestling Championship. Mm -hmm. That was actually held at my base at Quonset Point, a naval air station. That's the first time they ever held that tournament there, too. And winning this championship, 
give you a little background on that. Uh, the first match that I had in that tournament, I went in for a takedown, and I really hit my knee. I, I kind of busted my knee up. Okay. But, you know, our athletes, you know, they get up and keep going. You know, so that's basically what I did. But as I went on and wrestled more matches, the second, the third, my 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 knee my knee blew up on me, and it okay. was I was really in excruciating pain. You okay. know, but I went on and, and wrestled. You know, went on and wrestled, and then at what we call the wrestle off, that's when you wrestle for first place or second place. Because I was hurting so bad, the Referees came out because they were naturally concerned about, uh, you know, me being injured, and asked me the question: Did I want to continue to wrestle? Yeah. And with, without even thinking about what they said, not, yes, I'm, I'm going to wrestle. I'm going to wrestle. I want to wrestle <laughs> because yeah. I knew that if I did not wrestle, I would forfeit the match, and yeah. I didn't want to forfeit the match because. That would make me come in second place, and that's not what I was there for. I had a mission. And my right. mission was to wrestle and represent the United States Navy. And I think I did that very well. So I went yes, out and wrestled, yeah. went out there and wrestled, and I, I think it was my fastest pin that, that day, that, that, that tournament, of the tournament. But with having the pain in my knee, how it hurt me. I had to go to the emergency room right after that. Okay. But when they the champ, and when they held my hand up, when they held my hand up, and they said I was first place, and to hear the audience clapping and cheering. It was very emotional. It's emotional to me now. Yeah. And I think when I think about it, you know, what I had to go through. Pain. The, the pain, the first to feel like it, but to win the match. Yes, sir. To yes, win sir. the match. Thank you for elaborating on that, Mr. Bailey. I have a few more things I'd like to you know weigh in on, okay? Yes, sir. Now, I know you're very familiar with what this slide is going to be about. Yes, sir, I am familiar with that. <laughs> yes, very familiar you are. with that. And um, it's coming through okay on your end? Yes, it is. It looks, it looks great. Okay. Well, only you can tell us about how this came about, and I'm going to let you speak about it. Yes. Leon Bailey, the dream, Navy Pride, came about. I had thought about, had been thinking about the Navy, some of the things that I had to go through uh, in life itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the thought of really writing the story came one night while I was asleep. I woke up. I I would imagine somewhere two, three o'clock in the morning, and God gave me the story. Yeah, God yeah. gave me the story. Yeah. I understand. You were and and by the man, thinking about that, that's how the story came about. And then I picked my pen up and started writing. You know, uh, kind of like somewhat writing like ABC this, ABC that, and then later on with uh, certain sentences and certain things I thought of, I kind of, I put it in a sentence structure and then from a sentence structure with other things that I had written down, mm -hmm. put it into a paragraph form. And then once I put it in a paragraph form, all the paragraphs that I had, that's how the book came about. Yeah. Well, it's 
I knew it was the story behind it, and more importantly, a journey. Um, I'm glad for you to elaborate on it until you tell myself and the view in public about how the birth of that came about. Yes, they, and, and with they, that, speaking of the birth, as I said before, yes. the birth came about because yes. of God. This I is, believe it's it. not my story. It's his story. Right. And God tells us to share our story. And this is what I'm trying to share the story that was given to me. So what in return, how can I give it to somebody else to inspire and motivate? Right. It can encourage and uplift their life. I, I completely agree with you. I attest to that fact completely. I got another slide for you to look at. Tell me if it comes through okay. I'm sure you can tell me what this uh, occasion was about. Oh, yes, yes. As, as a, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. As a picture of uh, Kenny Mundy. Uh, Kenny Mundy was the first African American to win a gold medal in the Olympics in 1998. Okay. Now, the reason why, how that came about was one of the coaches here, and I have to give him credit, Mr. Cornell Bass has really helped me out a lot to the extent mm -hmm. of exposing me to different wrestling tournaments, other coaches, and other uh, familiar names in wrestling. But this, this picture here uh, was at Akron University in Ohio. Okay. And the, reason, and the reason why I went there because Mr. Cornell Bass wanted me to meet Kenny Mundy, the first African American to win a medal in the Olympics, 1998 uh, Olympics. Well, Leon Bailey was the first African American to integrate a Navy wrestling team, first African American to a coach a Navy wrestling team. So he thought that this would be a real nice venture for us to, to meet each other. Two firsts. Two yeah. firsts in, in history. In the history of wrestling, uh, two firsts. Two pioneers. Yes. Two pioneers in wrestling. You know, so uh, I received the invitation uh, through Mr. Bass to go to Akron, Ohio, for the privilege of being able to sell my book, autograph my book, tell my story, and also to meet Kenny Mundy. Yeah. That's how that came about. You know, if uh, two legends got a chance to meet each other, and as I said in the introduction, the both of you were first in your class. Yeah. And... Uh, Yes, I'm sure more than was a joyous occasion. Yes, it was. It still yes. is. Just to just to just think about it. Yeah, is Mister uh, Monday still with us? Yes, he is. I think uh, he's coach, he's he's coaching up in, in Iowa. That's where he's from. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys get a chance to talk sometime on the phone or? Not not too often. <laughs> you know, uh, I haven't talked to him. Really, but one time since we met. Uh, okay. okay. And we know life can be busy and life is complicated enough. Maybe your paths are crossed again. Maybe you'll be able to talk to them and let them know what you're doing. Yes. Can I can I interject something? Sure. Uh, if, if we have time. Sure. And that is, uh, at the meeting, Mr. Mundy, I received a call in 20, 2018. Okay. And that was from an owner in Baltimore who, who owns uh, a bakery. But I was very surprised because the owner, he recognizes a lot of Baltimore's legends. Legend. Mm -hmm. And receiving a call, I was informed from him that they wanted, he wanted to recognize me as one of Baltimore's 
sports legend. Yes. yes. And it was a ceremony that was held in Baltimore at the Avenue Bakery. The Avenue Bakery, that's where it was, on Pennsylvania Avenue. Okay. And again, it, it was very emotional. A lot of things that are happening to me now has been very emotional to the extent of the recognition that I'm receiving and other people stating their feelings in their of their knowledge on history and where they comment where I should be in history. Sure. And it, I'm, I'm not sure that means probably a great deal to you because a lot of people are taking pride in what you've gone through to be here amongst us and to share your story and that you took the time to put it in literary form. So somebody could just sit back and take it in and read it. Because a lot of people don't know anything about where they came from. So to help them know where they're going. So, and this is a lot of why we're doing this venue right here. For the viewing public to hear your story and we just help you with it. But I'm more than honored just to be sitting here talking to you about it. Now, hopefully, yeah, uh, hopefully it comes out well if it doesn't come out well, I want you to know we'll we'll continue to get it worked out until we get it worked. So yes, sir. It's a, at another time. Yes, sir. I, I've got another slide here, and it's the flip side. Yes. The flip side, which is back side of the book, uh, this came about because. Uh, I'm a vet, because I am a veteran, yeah. I had to take physical therapy mm -hmm. and talking to the, the nurse that was giving me physical therapy, I'm telling her my background and how I got hurt and everything, and she was telling me about her family. She told okay. me about her family, and her family, they was a wrestling family, and, oh. and she said, and she said, I know, I said to her, I'm going to give you a copy of my book. I'm going to give you a copy of my book. And I gave her a copy, and she was very enthused, uh, Kendall. Uh, she was very enthused about the book. And I asked her, could she make a comment, and I'll put it on my book. Okay. And that's what you're looking at. I mean, I was really surprised uh, with her comment and also the history of her family in wrestling. And one, one thing to the viewers is that we as wrestlers, wrestlers are one family, one yep. family. It sounds like it's a brotherhood. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. And that's something, something to be proud about. I mean, this is a positive thing. You're, you're a sports lesson. And, and we know in this, this country, along like many others, what is American favorite pastime? It's football, volleyball, baseball, wrestling, sport. You know, it's uh, you know, we look at people playing sports and we say they're living a dream. Okay. You know, to go out and do something that you passionately feel something great about, and to go do it. At Better to be doing that and sitting somewhere in an office at a nine to five. <laughs> you know, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, um, everybody doesn't. Everybody's not going to be a singer, an actor, or a sports legend. You know, some of us find ourselves in other vocations doing other things. You know, but Mr. Bailey, your time has been valuable. But that's about all the time we have now. What I want to know is, will you come back on the finance hour? Yes, sure I will. Like, we sure like to get any new new developments and any new updates with you and what's going on and where things are going with your book. Hopefully, all this will come out well. And like I said, if whatever, if it's not, we will definitely do it again. I give you my word on that. Again, it's a pleasure. 
sitting here talking to you and going through your story and telling it to the viewing people. Right now, we're going to have to sign off. Okay, I just want to, before you sign off, I just want to say thank you. Oh, I appreciate sure. the fact that you took time to take time in consideration just for the interview itself. And again, oh, yes. I mean, you know, I'm glad you said that, Mr. Bailey, because some things in life, well, most things in life that are very important take time. And there's always a process involved. And uh, we know this is just how things are. We live in a world where uh, we understand that instant gratification is what millenniums want. But we don't live in this world. It's not really about instant gratification all the time. Even a millennium, millennial will find out that it's going to take you four years to get that college degree. So you can't get it in one year. You're going to have to stay four. <laughs> yeah, <It's laughs> they'll find that out. Now, hopefully, it's a passion of theirs that they really want to do it, and it's not something they're trying to live through their parents' eyes to do it right. because their parents want to. But most things do take time, even like the process we're going through right here. But on that same note, I'm going to leave you, and we will, like I said, do this again if it looks like it doesn't prevail. It's a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of the day, sir. It's not every day that I talk to a legend. You do the same. You enjoy your, your day, too. The rest Thank of the you, day. sir. Thank you. Thanks for watching our podcast. If you would like to participate in our future podcasts as a guest or if you would like to promote your business or service, contact Wayne Randall at 443 726 6693. Also visit our website at www.yourfinanceinfo.com. This is a TNBUN production.